Hello everyone and welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of Alteryx Inspire. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, alongside my co-host and analyst, Rob Strecce. Rob, this is, this is such a great event and we're really hearing all of these fantastic stories about how, how customers are, and, and partners are using Alteryx products to, to, to make their lives better and faster. Yeah. And well, I think, again, it, it takes a village to really bring AI to life. And I, I think, again, how you get from idea to workflow to actually wrangling your data and really getting it to the right place, it, it takes more than just understanding a tool, it's how do you use the tool and how do you really make it come to life. Well, to talk more about that, I'd like to welcome two new guests to theCUBE. We have uh, Eric Soden, he is the managing partner at Capitalize. Thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, thrilled to be here. And Sean Mock, the senior manager of analytics at Capitalize. Thank you Thank for you having so us, much. appreciate it. Yeah, so I want to start with you, Eric. Wham and Watchtower, two products developed by Capitalize using Alteryx um, to enhance the Alteryx user experience. Give our viewers a rundown about what these products are, what they benefit with their functionalities. Sure, yeah. So, you know, as you implement, we've implemented Alteryx a couple thousand times over the years. We've been partner of the year five times now. Um, and as you do that, all software, there's, not, like, there's not, no software out there that's perfect. There's always things that you wish it did, the enhancements that you wish were there. And I come from an IT background. So as I was working with Alteryx, I was thinking from an IT perspective, how do we audit this? How do we, if, if somebody comes and asks a question about what are the different data sources and which workflows hit them and what if we made a change to this column or this schema or this table, how would we affect that? Or if an API key needs to change, how do I find it? Um, and as we started realizing you know, that Alteryx had areas where those types of things could be improved, documentation, um, a lot of things that you would think of in more of a, a traditional IT SDLC um, type life cycle, we thought, well, if you, see an, if you see something that could be better, make it better. And so we started down the Wham and Watchtower path about three years ago and have continued to just enhance it over the course of time to help people with SDLC, with governance, with monitoring, um, and things like that. So that was, the, that was the initial thought process. It was based on a, a client who's highly regulated, big audit, a um, lot of audit issues, and um, they needed things automatically documented and be able to find things very quickly. And we said, well, we'll build you, build you a product and see if this can go somewhere. Mm -hmm. So far it has. Yeah, I, I think to me that's, governance is always a big thing and a sure. big issue and especially understanding lineage and things of that nature, because yeah. especially with AI now and like again, to your point about if you change a column or what is the, the truth or what is this data product that I'm putting into AI and into my app and how that rolls around. Give us some ideas, both of you, about some customers and some success stories because, I mean, again, over a thousand implementations, I mean, they're, they're, that, that's a lot. Yeah, I mean, yeah. and a lot of success yeah, there. Yeah, I'll, I'll start and then, okay. and then Sean can go. Uh, so like one, one example, we have a large Alteryx customer, one of the uh, big wholesale clubs, um, and they had they have like 12,000 workflows <clears throat> and their goal was to move from an on-prem database to a cloud database but they needed to search all the 12,000 workflows and find all the references to that on-prem database and switch them to the cloud database. In Alteryx, it's, it's pretty difficult to do that in mass. You can do it one at a time, but if you have 12,000 and each one takes you 10 minutes, you're talking about significant amount of, of time and you're going to be hunting through that trying to figure it all out. So what we built was basically a mass find and replace for them, that's part of WAM. And so you can, you can feed in a list. These are all the things I'm looking for. This is what I want to replace it with. And it will go through hundreds of find and replaces throughout your 12,000 workflows. And then it will identify every workflow that it made a change to so you can go back in and, and, and update that workflow and retest it. And so, you know, that's seems like a simple thing, but it saved thousands of hours of time, and, and for something that's not a very high value item, right? It's like just updating something from, from A to B is not super exciting, and so no one would want to do that project, so to be able to do it automatically was, was a huge one, so that was just one example. Yeah, I think the one that comes to mind for me was a telecom customer that we had. They had a lot of tools really on their server that was utilizing the email tool, right? And um, they went through the process of updating their SMTP server. 
which honestly was going to cause havoc for yeah. all of those workflows leveraging that. And honestly, they didn't really even have a way of understanding which workflows were even using that tool. And so with Wham, they were one, able to see all the workflows leveraging the email tool, but they're also be able to update the SMTP information, which would have had to have been a manual process. They would have had to open hundreds of workflows and made the manual update. So that process saved them a lot of time, and in the end, they ended up thanking us for that because it ended up saving them a lot of cost, which would have been expensive in the long run in ter terms of just man hours and, and having either developers or yeah. admins make those changes, so. Yeah. yeah, I mean, even the cognitive load on people trying to figure that out, and the, not to mention, that doesn't seem like a very sexy thing for a, a no. data wrangler to go and do. <laughs> no. <laughs> no one wants yeah. to dig through SQL statements or yeah. open up every workflow and click on every uh, mail tool. So um, yeah, a lot of what we're doing is we're basically harvesting all of the metadata behind Alteryx. So every workflow is just an XML file. So we're harvesting that, parsing it, putting it into a database, harvesting everything from the API, and harvesting everything from MongoDB, and making it all searchable and, find and, and able to be find, found and replaced easily, as well as like auto documentation and things like that. So it's a, you know, again, Ultrix, Ultrix made its home in the business, in accounting and finance and HR and tax. But then when somebody comes to you and says, hey, we're about to make a change to SAP, show me everything that we're going to affect. You have to be able to do that quickly. Yeah. Or audit wants to audit anything that has a SOX uh, potential impact. These 50 workflows are within scope of this audit. Please document them all. Who wants to document hundreds and hundreds of tools? So ideally what we're doing is we're just making it more efficient and easier for people to very quickly be able to answer questions about usage, about security, about uh, SDLC, about change management, about what's going on in the workflows. Um, and it's been, it's been a blast. Uh, Watchtower is a little different. Um, that's more focused on monitoring. So if you think about, if you have 750 employees come into your workflow, and it's a payroll workflow, you should have how many workflows, or how many people coming out of it? 750. 750, yeah. I would hope, no, right? No, you didn't lose so. any employees yeah. during that process, I, I hope. hope not, right? I, I, like, uh, uh, and, like, is that a trick question? <laughs> yeah, no, it's not a trick question. But, but if it's running every day behind the scenes, and no one's checking it, you could have somebody entered into HR incorrectly, right? You may, you may flip a switch or you may make an acquisition and not realize those people aren't being in there. And so unless someone's looking at it, if it's running every day or every week, and no one's looking at that actively, it can become a real problem. So what, what Watchtower does is you put little tests in your workflow that say, whatever you start with, you have to end with. If you, if you ran and it was 100 million records for the last 50 runs, if you have seven records today, do you think that it's correct? There's no chance it's correct, right? You should have approximately the same number of records. So again, these aren't the most sexy aspects of Alteryx, but they're super important because you do not want errors. You don't want people looking at the dashboard to start questioning the validity of the dashboard because then they'll stop trusting that. And if they stop trusting that, they stop trusting you, and they stop trusting Ultrix, and they stop trusting your data warehouse, and the whole thing kind of falls yeah. apart. So anyway, yeah, a lot of this is find and replace, documentation, monitoring, alerting people when something goes wrong. You want to know immediately. I don't want to know when the users call me in the morning. I want to know when it <laughs> breaks um, so I can go fix it and tell yeah. them, hey, don't look at it right now. Something's not quite right. So, Sean, this really does seem like it's a market necessity. I mean, you're saving all, so much time, so many man hours, so much, as Rob said, cognitive load, the boring, the tedium. Why doesn't Alteryx just offer these? Well, actually, Alteryx does sell our product. In fact, Alteryx can sell our product on our paper, and they do, and they actually enjoy it. Because <laughs> um, it you know, helps give customers what they want. And at the end of the day, that's what they want for the customers. If they, you know, if you're asking why they didn't do it, you know, I'm, I guess I would say it's probably time, resources, opportunity costs, things like that. And when you have someone who's a partner that's developing it for you, who also has domain knowledge, ends up being a better experience for the customer. And I think that's better for Alteryx anyway, is having a better experience for the customer. I think that's what they care about. Yeah, I think, and, and with like the Alteryx marketplace now, they're, they're pushing to have partners develop more things because yeah. you, you will, no matter how much money and time you have, you won't have enough to do everything you <laughs> want to do, right? And there's always going to be more things. And, you have to decide where you're going to spend your money. They're spending it on AI. They're spending it on a lot of the, a lot of the cloud things. I mean, we're, we're hearing all day, every day here about all the great things they are investing in. 
something's got to give, right? And so hopefully you have somebody else who sees a, a potential market opportunity um, and comes in and helps you close that gap. So that's, that's what we're trying to do is find things that people need, find things that people want, find things ideally Altrix isn't going to do tomorrow so that, uh, so that we have a market and, uh, and help plug those holes. So I, I, you brought it up and I'm, I'm, how is the, uh, work with the marketplace, Ben, because it, it seems like, I mean, Suresh was just on and talking yeah. about how fast it's growing. How has that worked for you being a partner? Yeah, well, kind of fun. We, we won uh, Marketplace Partner of the Year, uh, so, so yeah. that was cool. Um, it's, it's great, and it's, you know, you look at Salesforce, you look at Snowflake, they all have marketplaces. AWS yeah. has a marketplace, yeah. like, everybody's got a marketplace, and I think, you know, Altrix is a little bit slow to, slow to adopt that, that particular mechanism, but the nice thing is, is, there's going to be some weird data source that no one's ever, and, and it might cost you $50,000 to build a connector to, a, to some weird database. Well, if someone builds it and can make money on selling it, they may only break even or whatever, but they now have customers that they didn't have before. Uh, could Altrix do it? Sure, but can they really create connectors for every single possible thing? So we have a UiPath connector up there so that we can auto call UiPath bots directly from workflows. We have a Jira connector so that if you want to pull your data out of Jira and put it into Altrix, you can do that. So um, for us, it's another mechanism of differentiation, right? Making sure people know who we are. Um, it's a, it's it's a value add. We have to build it for our clients anyways. So we might as well offer it to other people. Um, and, and hopefully it ends up being a commercially viable situation for us as well. Yeah, and, and so I think that's where you're at today. When you look out into the future, what's next for Wham and Watchtower? That's a great question. Um, you know, I think both of these products, what I, what I told people is our goal was to add add as much functionality where it's crazy to not have it, right? Like, <laughs> like why wouldn't you? It's not, it's not so expensive that if, you're, if you have a large critical Altrix instance. So now it's a question of what else do people need? What, so every client we bring on, they, they bring on a set of use cases we may have not thought of. And, uh, and that, that's really fun because one, we're going to continue to develop things that we know people need, but ideally we have people saying, hey, you know, Sean, Eric, is there any chance that Wham could do this, or Watchtower could do that, yeah. and and we can bring that and say, yeah, absolutely. And that's another benefit to Altrix is we could be a little bit more nimbler. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, again, you know, we're a firm of uh, 125 people. If uh, if, we, if I want to make a change as the as one of the founders, I can make a change right now, right? And there's a, not a lot of uh, not a lot stopping us. So if people have ideas, people want things built in or added in, we can just do it, and that's really fun. So what are you getting out of being here? I mean, besides the awards and the accolades, sure. of course, but, but what are the kinds of conversations that you're having that make you eager to go back to, to Texas on Monday and really get, get going on some, some new functionalities and, and, and capabilities? Uh, so I guess I'll, I'll start and I'll kick yeah. it over to Sean. Um, but for, for me, you know, we've been in this market for a long, long time. We're well known at, at within the Altrix world. So seeing, seeing people that you see once a year, seeing clients, um, seeing different people that, that we maybe have never met but have heard of us, having people walk up and say, hey, we've been working with your team, this is so fun to, to like get to meet in person. That stuff's been great. And then obviously hearing all the updates and, and seeing even the other partners and the things that they're doing and working through. And um, you know, technology changes pretty quickly. People, people are, are always needing different things. So it's fun to get out here and get a pulse on everything that's going on across the board. So that's been really nice. Yeah, I think my takeaway has been there's like been such great groundswell around our products that people are already coming to us, already knowing about us, approaching us at the booth, saying, hey, I have a you know, documentation uh, use case that I, I'd love to talk to you about, or I have issues like monitoring data connections, and I heard you were the guys. So there's definitely a, a need that we're addressing in the market and it's great to see that, that that is driving people to us and, and that we're able to help. A little bit of validation. Yeah, yeah. it definitely makes me feel good about what I do yeah. every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah it's, it's nice when people are proactively approaching yes. us and saying like, hey, I heard about this, I want to see it. Yeah. Or hey, I heard about this, I want to buy it. And, yeah. I, and I would assume that a lot of people have tried to build it themselves and they sit there and go, okay, this is just, uh, yeah. Not worth doing from that perspective. Yeah, we, I hear that a lot of people saying, you know, I, we tried to do something like this where we were integrating with the APIs yeah. or the MongoDB, and I think just the, you know, investment in that really is kind of a, probably a detractor and not like a good use of their time when there's 
an out-of-the-box solution that can really do what they're doing, plus a lot more. Often we find, we're often we find our product is solving really more needs than they're able to even solve on their own. Yeah. Eric, last question for yeah, you. As yeah. a founder, at this point in time where we know that the pace of innovation is, is, is <laughs> extraordinary and only accelerating. Yeah. I wonder if you have any advice for your fellow founders who are maybe interested in, in getting into AI and, and data analytics, what, you would, what you'd recommend to them. Uh, to, well, uh, I, think, I think the big thing is you better be ready to adjust, you better be ready to adapt, you better be looking for ways to differentiate. Um, everybody thought CDs were really cool when they were really cool. <laughs> not, it's, not, it's not going so, if you were in that market, I hope you got into streaming or something else, right? And I, I think it's the same here. You, you've got to be cautiously optimistic about all the different things that are coming out. You've got to stay on top of it. You don't want to adopt things so early that when it's not ready for prime time, it doesn't actually work. But um, I, I think in general, making sure that you're diversified, that you're thinking about more than just one little solution. Even, even Wham, if we only had one little thing within Wham, it wouldn't, no one would pay money for it, you know? It would just be a little tiny utility. But if you can add enough value to people's lives, in the end, what people pay for is help. It's, it's, it's if you can help me do something, whether it's help me with, with a plumbing problem, help me with, with a law problem, help me with a technology problem, um, if you can add enough value to somebody else's life by adding true value that they're willing to pay money for, um, then you have something really special. Um, and whether that's services, whether it's software, um, you just really have to make sure that you're focusing on adding value that people need, not what you think would be cool. Um, great advice, <laughs> great <laughs> advice. Yeah, thank you so much. Sean and Eric, a pleasure having you on theCUBE. Yeah, pleasure's absolutely. ours. Thanks for, thanks for having us. I'm Rebecca Knight for Rob Strecce. Stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of Alteryx Inspire. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in technology news, coverage, and analysis. <laughs>